Hey guys, and welcome back. So this is a super exciting video because this is the first ever collaborative video on my channel. And what I'm gonna be doing here is essentially talking about what makes a great programming project with an ex-Google engineer. So we're gonna be here with Clement. I'm sure some of you guys have heard of his channel, but he has an awesome YouTube channel that talks about entrepreneurship, software engineering, how to get a job as you know an intern or as a full-time position at one of these large tech companies. And I've really tried my best to extract as much knowledge from him as possible. You'll notice that I kind of try to sit back a little bit through what I call a little interview or a discussion here, because I really want to get you know his expertise and his knowledge and share that with you guys. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoy this this video if you do smash a like go check out Clement's channel he has an awesome you know I, I watch it all the time it's great and anyways let's get into the video and you know hear about what makes a great programming project hey Tim thanks for having me yeah I'm really excited to be here my name is Clement Clem for short and uh, I've been a software engineer at Google at Facebook now I'm working full-time on my company algo expert algoexpert.io it's a coding interview prep platform and I also have a YouTube channel Awesome. Okay, sweet. So yeah, on your YouTube channel, I mean, I've actually been a, a kind of a low key fan of your channel watching some of the videos. He just talks about like software engineering and just some really cool, interesting topics. I definitely recommend that you guys go over there and check that out. Um, and also I've been using Algo Expert, which is Clem's kind of product. Uh, I guess you're what a co-founder of it, right? Yep. Yep. Um, so, you know, if you guys want to use that product, I do have a 15% discount code. It's tech with Tim. There's also a link in the description. I have some videos going through when I've used it, but it genuinely is a really great tool. And, you know, I've done a video on Clem's channel. That you guys will see where a live coding interview um, and kind of the reason for my maybe success in that is because of using Algo Expert. But anyways, enough of that. Let's get into this. So the first question I want to ask you is, do you need a ton of projects on your kind of programming coding resume? I see people all the time asking, how many do I need? You know, how great do they have to be? So do you need a ton or is one enough? That's a good question. And I think that the answer, unfortunately, is it depends. Mm -hmm. There is no right answer or rather no clear answer. I think the main thing that it depends on is the amount of work experience or internship experience that you have. If you have a lot of work experience, you probably don't need that many projects. In fact, I'd say the more senior you get, the fewer projects you need. The more junior you are, so if you're straight out of college, the more projects you need. If you have no work experience whatsoever, and even no internship experience, which is the position that I was in when I applied to Google, because I had kind of a weird, uh, you know, experience with college where mm -hmm. I didn't do a computer science degree, I had no internship experience, and then I did a coding boot camp right out of college. But since I had no work experience relevant to, to software engineering, I ended up having four software engineering projects on my resume. And I think four would be a good number for someone who has no experience, no internship experience. If you have like one internship, maybe you only need two good projects or three good projects. If you have two years of work experience, you probably only need one project. And then if you have more than that, maybe you no longer need them at that point. Awesome. So it sounds like really, you know, if you have more experience, that kind of shows what skill set you already have. Whereas if you're coming in kind of fresh or you're coming right out of school, the more projects can really demestrate, you know, what you know, right? Whereas you might not yes. have that experience to fall back on. Awesome. Yeah, and okay. I, would, I would even say, because I recently chatted with a Google recruiter, and she, she put this in a good way, where a project is really meant to show to people that you are passionate about software engineering, that you have skills, demonstrable mm -hmm. skills, you're able to build stuff, you know, and that's really useful if you don't have work experience. But then if you have work experience, then you need, you, you don't need to prove that as much, if that makes sense. For sure, that makes a ton of sense. I think everyone kind of understands that. Um, awesome, so I mean, you talked about passion, which is actually something I wanted to ask. Um, these projects, is it important that these projects come from outside of school or is it okay to kind of highlight, you know, two or three really good group projects or school projects that you worked on? Kind of where, what's the balance between, you know, some stuff outside of school to really show that you are passionate and you are, you know, taking initiative to make the projects and those school project, if that makes any sense. Like what holds, you know, higher ground? Does it matter if it's just school projects? Should you have a mix of both? Um, like your thoughts on that maybe? Yeah, and again here I would say it really depends. Mm -hmm. I think that ideally a mix of both could be really good. And um, the reason I think college projects or school projects might be really good is because typically those projects tend to be class projects or team projects rather. Yeah. And that can be a good thing to show that you're able to work as part of a team. Two small caveats there. If you do have 
team projects that you're showing, make sure to really highlight the work that you did. You know, maybe yeah. you can you can word your resume or your description of a project in a way that really conveys that you were part of a team and you handled all of the back end, for instance, or maybe you were the the direction giver of the project, if that makes sense. Yeah. The other sure. caveat is that you probably don't want only team projects. It's probably good to have at least one or two projects that you just did all by yourself from scratch to have a nice balance there. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so I think that makes a lot of sense. So really just, you know, if you have a group project on there, highlighting exactly what you did in the project, because it's one thing to just slap one on, especially when we know, you know, people in group projects, one person typically ends up doing a lot of the work, right? Um, right. And then just showing some individual projects too, to really show that, you know, you are passionate and that this is what you can do on your own. It's not just in a group, right? Um, but then just, awesome. just one more yeah. thing that I would add here is that, like, ultimately, you really have to ask yourself, what is the goal of a software engineering project on your resume? Like we just said before, it's to show to your recruiters or potential hiring managers that you have demonstrable skills, you have passion and all that. If yeah. you are really, really proud of a couple of class projects or even multiple, you know, more than two, maybe the only projects you're proud of are the ones that you did as part of a team in a class, then so be it, just go with those, right? You're just trying to sell yourself as best as possible. So even though I think the recommendation would be a nice balance of the two, go with what sells you best, if that makes sense. For sure, you have to make sure that you know you really like the project and that if that gets brought up, you can talk about the skills that you applied in the project. And you know, it's a great kind of starter question. It's a great like leeway into what you did and your skill set, right? Um, Awesome. Okay. So I think another question, I get asked this a lot too. People say, how complex does my project need to be to put it on a resume? Like if I have something that's, you know, maybe kind of medium level, not super crazy complex, maybe not a massive like thousand line coat, can I put it on? Or do I need to be showing stuff that's like really impressive, really amazing? Is it okay to have a few kind of simple projects that demonstrate some skills or do they need to be, you know, crazy one massive project, right? Yeah. So I, I think that here, again, you have to first remember what you're trying to accomplish with these projects and the context around your application. So if mm -hmm. you're a college student, for instance, you are not gonna be expected to have built an app with millions of downloads or a website with millions of customers or thousands of customers, right? So that's one thing. From that point of view, you should not feel discouraged if your project is kind of you know trivial in a way or, mm -hmm. or not legit in a way, because that's not expected, if that makes sense. The second thing is, as far as complexity, complexity is a very ambiguous and subjective. First of all, what really makes a project complex? Is it the technical complexity? Is it the product's complexity, you know, getting everyone together if it was a team project? So that's something that can be difficult to, to measure. So I wouldn't worry too much on having something that's hyper complex. And then the, the third thing, which now I guess goes into what makes a project good, yeah. I would say that more than complexity, you want a project that a recruiter or a hiring manager or a software engineer reading your resume is gonna be able to grasp very quickly and is gonna be impressed by at a glance. And again, that doesn't necessarily translate into the most technically complex project. Uh, if I look at examples of my projects, I have a video on my YouTube channel that, you know, my software engineering projects, my most technically complex project was like creating a, a sort of a basic programming language and an interpreter for it. It wasn't very visual or very easily graspable. And mm -hmm. so I don't think it was actually my best project. So, so I would say, you know, just be wary of complexity, basically. That's, that's sort of what I'm getting at. For sure. So it, it sounds like you need to make sure this project almost kind of sells itself, right? Like if they read through it and they hear the title, they're going to understand exactly, you know, what went into the project, what was involved with it. Whereas if you have a very technically complex project, it could be hard to kind of demonstrate why that was so complex, right? And, you know, you might not get as much credit for it because the interviewer, or the recruiter looking at it doesn't understand what you had to do for that project. Whereas you have something more visual. And I think you had a project where you did like some sorting and some searching algorithm visualization. I know when I looked yeah. at that, it looked really impressive immediately just because of all the visuals, right? And I think that's a good probably point that you brought up to make sure that your projects, you know, 
people can understand kind of what's gone into them. Maybe there is some visual components and it's appealing to a recruiter, someone reading through, like they'll understand what it is by your brief description, right? So is that, that's kind of what exactly. you're getting at with that? Awesome. Exactly. And I saw your recent video on projects that you can spin up or develop in a weekend. Yeah. And I think that in that video, a really good example of a project was the very first one you had, the Sudoku solver. Mm -hmm. The reason that was a good project, in my opinion, is because putting aside the fact that, like you said, you can develop that in a weekend, basically, but it's very easy to explain to someone. You, know, it's a, you, you wrote an algorithm that solves a Sudoku board, and the majority of people know what Sudoku is. If they don't, you can briefly describe Sudoku is a puzzle-like game that is difficult to solve for human beings, you know, something like that, and you yeah. wrote an algorithm that solves it. But then you also added that visual component, the GUI, the graphical yeah. user interface for it, right? That's actually super important because suddenly this project that was otherwise very understandable, at least, you know, uh, in writing, but not necessarily visual, suddenly mm -hmm. you actually have something that someone can interact with. And really there, they immediately grasp it. It's complex enough. You know, you don't need to have yeah. a, a way fancier algorithm and you've got a great project. Yeah, so that I think that really ties it all together, right? So if you guys haven't seen that video, I'll leave a link or a card so you can check out what that project is. Uh, but essentially, it just is you can play the game of Sudoku and then you can actually view the backtracking algorithm that I used to solve it, going through and solving it step by step. And creating those visuals can be, you know, an extra add on, but it really is not that difficult. It takes an extra few hours and it really kind of highlights, well, the complexity and what goes into the project and allows someone to just quickly, easily, even if they don't know much about programming to see it and understand it. Yeah. So that's a great point, Clem. Um, okay. So here's some shorter questions, maybe. Do interviewers look at your source code, <laughs> like your GitHub repositories? That, and that's a good question. I don't have the answer to that question, mainly because I haven't seen what happens behind the scenes, at least when I was applying. Mm -hmm. I would say that in the majority of cases, they won't. For instance, yeah. if you're applying to a big tech company like Google or Amazon, I highly doubt that a recruiter, certainly not a recruiter, because a recruiter is not meant to be technical. They don't need to know how to code. But even an engineer, I highly doubt that an engineer is going to look at your GitHub code, for instance. They might, you know, that you might have a couple people who will go poking around it, but unlikely. In a smaller startup, maybe that's more likely because there they might be hiring you almost less on potential and more on your you know, objective skills and abilities. Mm -hmm. And there they might be more like, hmm, does this person actually know how to write JavaScript? Because we're going to need yeah. them to write JavaScript immediately, you know? But overall, hard to say. Okay. So I, I think that's a good answer. I mean, I just want... A lot of people ask me, you know, does my code have to be crisp, clean? Does it have to be amazing? And I think that kind of helps answer the question. You should do as good of a job as you can, but, you know, yeah. if you need to get the project out and put it on your resume, chances are if you're applying at a larger company it's less likely they're going to look at. And just from a time sake as well, it makes sense, right? It's hard to look through six different programming projects on each resume and read through the source code and see what's going on, right? And you, so yeah, exactly. of course. Awesome. So okay. do your best, you know, write good code, but don't make it necessarily like, you know, it doesn't have to be the best production code in the world. Okay, great. So that's, that's great. Um, okay, so, you know, you have these projects, you go into a resume, or a resume, you go into an interview, and you know, they're kind of going through your resume, and they're asking you questions, what should you really touch on in your projects? And we already, we talked about this before, but I really want to hammer it in. So someone that's going to an interview, and they, you know, they have these projects to discuss, what should they really talk about? What's the thing that they should focus on that's going to be most impressive, and you know, lead to potentially getting hired just because of some of the stuff from their projects, if, if that question makes any sense? Yeah, so ideally, lead with your best foot forward, meaning if you have a project that you're really passionate about and you think it's the most impressive, make sure that it's highlighted on your resume as the first project or something like that, because an interviewer is likely going to look at the first one and ask you about that one. And if they ask you just arbitrarily, tell me about a project you worked on, obviously talk about the one that you're more, more comfortable with or that you think is more impressive. And then have some sort of... 30 second pitch for the project. It's almost like, you know, if you take a look at entrepreneurship, right? When you have a company and you're pitching the company and you want to be able to explain it to someone who has no idea what the company is in a word or in a sentence, same thing for the project. If you need to spend three minutes giving me the backstory behind your project so that I can even start understanding it, mm -hmm. that's not good, right? 
So yeah. as an example, take your, your Sudoku pro, uh, project, the way that I would probably say it in, you know, 20 seconds, you go, hey, are you familiar with the Sudoku puzzles? Yes, no, and you explain what it is depending on the answer there. And then you say, okay, I wrote, I, I did a project where I wrote an algorithm that solves the Sudoku, and I wrote an interface for it where you can actually solve the Sudoku as you go through it and see the algorithm working, giving you hints or telling you if it's correct. And then you, you know, you can say, hey, if you want, I can show it to you. Boom, you've explained it in 10 seconds, they know what it is, and then you can follow the conversation if they wanna ask you more about it. Great, I think that's great advice for everyone. You know, take, make sure that whatever you're doing, you know, you can explain that quickly, right? So someone that's not so technical, or even just in like maybe a behavioral interview, if you get asked about something like that, right? That you can really easily explain it. So if you're going in, make sure that if you list all these projects on your resume, you know how you're gonna summarize them to someone who's never seen the source code or never seen what it looks like before. So that's definitely great advice. And the last exactly. question, which I think is gonna be actually fairly interesting. I'm excited to know the answer. What is the most impressive or maybe just the coolest project you've ever seen on someone's resume when you're like looking at, I'm, I know you do the technical interview, so I'm not sure how many resumes you've had a chance to look at, but what's the most impressive one you've seen, you know, coming in from someone who's trying to get a job? Yeah. And so here, uh, you know, for, for all of those of you who are, who are watching right now, I swear that Tim did not pay me or tell me to say this beforehand. He has no idea I'm about to say this. Yeah. But, uh, and I say this not to flatter you, Tim, but I would honestly say that your resume, and I haven't seen your actual resume, but I can just imagine what it would look yeah. like. Your YouTube channel, I would say, is probably the most impressive project that I, that I can think of from someone who might be applying to jobs. Your YouTube channel is like, a portfolio on steroids like you have basically your youtube channel i can click on it right you first of all i yeah. you, you put it in your resume youtube channel on tech but already just that i know what it is i'm gonna yeah. click on it i can actually open it super quickly it's online right and i'll see holy crap this person has <laughs> hundreds of videos covering all sorts of things like working on projects within a project, it's like projectception. So that would be yeah. like the best, the best project, I would say. Wow. Well, I definitely really appreciate that. I, like we said, I had no idea he was going to say that. Um, but yeah, that's. I mean, that shows you guys, though, right? Like, take initiative, go out there, and get some stuff done. And that's the number one thing that I say to anyone who asks me, like, what project should I work on? What should I do? I'm like, just do something. And that's what yep. I do all the time is, you know, I don't know exactly what I'm gonna work on. I don't have the most impressive machine learning project to show you guys. I just pick something that I think would be like kind of cooler that I'm kind of interested in and just do it. And if you really can't do that, you know, go to watch some of my videos, watch some of Clem's videos, get some inspiration and then just go and make something. And that's, you know, how I've built kind of this portfolio for myself is just not worrying so much on like the fine details on exactly what I'm building, but just building it and just doing it and learning. And then as you go, you know, you can pick some other more interesting things. Okay, so that, Agreed. you know, is pretty much going to wrap up our video. Do you have any last stuff you want to say to the audience? This has been amazing, by the way, so thank you so much. I hope everyone that's still here has got a ton of value, but I'll give you one last chance to kind of wrap it up if you want. Sure. One, one last little idea that popped up here about the project is just one thing to make sure that you don't do is make sure that you don't make your project descriptions super hard to understand. Try to give your project descriptions in your resume to someone, one of your friends who doesn't know about the project. And if they can't tell you what your project is after reading your two line sentence, if they're really confused, that's not going to be good. The recruiters are also going to be confused. So that's like one last little you know tip. Awesome. I think that's a great tip. Okay, guys. So that is pretty much going to wrap it up. Definitely go check out Clem's channel. He has a ton of awesome stuff on there. I've personally been watching almost every video he's been posting and getting a ton of value. And again, you know, massive thank you for helping everyone out here. I'm sure a lot of people are really going to appreciate this. And, you know, leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys.